any sinner is capable of being a great saint. And any saint is also capable of being a great sinner, a great sinner. G'day, g'day, everybody. Welcome to a post Roe versus Wade world, at least here in the United States. Nice to be here with you. Yeah, so what's going on? You doing all right? I uh, woke up, prayed, came in, did a little, came into the office, did a little uh, podcast for my gorgeous local supporters. And now I'm here and I'm going to try to get in the middle. No, that's the wrong way. There we go. Um, and I was struck by what Fulton Sheen was just saying in that music, if you listen to it, that uh, music we put together that you can find over on Catholic Lo-Fi, that, that, that every saint is capable of being a great sinner and every sinner is capable of being a great saint. And so I said it yesterday, but I'll say it again. If you're somebody who's had an abortion or you're somebody who's encouraged somebody to have an abortion or you've done some other evil, you know, realize that uh, you're deeply loved by God and you're not uh, irredeemable. You know, um, so I think sometimes when people try to remind others of the mercy of God, it it, it makes them skeptical. It it they they wonder if we're trying to downplay their sin. You know, um, but to quote uh, a book I'm reading called "I Believe in Love," I'm not telling you, um, you know, that you, that your sins are. Uh, are not very great. You are far more wretched than you can ever possibly understand. What I'm telling you is you don't believe enough in the mercy of God, you know? So if you are somebody who's had an abortion or has encouraged somebody to have an abortion, get to confession and receive the mercy of God, you know? Um, and then let's let's get on with it. All right. Uh, cheers, everybody. I'm going to drink out of my super small cup of coffee. Espresso. That's my wife on the phone. Should I call her? I should call her back. Let me just text her. You excited about this? Um, hey, good looking. I'm doing a live stream.
It's sometimes hard when you have an Australian accent to try to talk to the phone because I don't understand what you're saying. But there we go. Um, I want to look at an article. <laughs> Trent Horn is featured in a CNN article educating their readers about abortion. I cannot believe that happened. So we'll take a look at that together. Before we do that, though, so this is the article I want to look at. Before we do that, though, I want to invite you to become a supporter of ours over on Locals. When you do, you get a bunch of free stuff in return. Read that stuff below if you don't believe me. Um, we got a ton of stuff coming out. One of the things we've got coming out is Dr. Ed Fazer just recorded a seven-part video course just for my supporters. Uh, we also have a brand new ink on paper newsletter that's incredible that's going to be shipped out to you no matter where you are in the world for free if you become a local supporter. We have weekly, uh, sorry, monthly audio books being read professionally you get a ton of crap so go support us click the link below help us to do what we're doing especially after youtube bans us it'd be nice to have you over there all right are you with me can you hear me are you are you tracking in the live chat there all 207 of you you little beautiful buggers all right let's have a look at this oh glory to god they cite the same Bible and invoke the same Jesus, but these two Christians are on opposite sides of the abortion debate. Right, it's because one of them is wrong, and we'll see why. Trent Horn made it on CNN, what a champion, I friggin' love him. So glad Trent Horn is on our side, aren't you? Imagine if he were an atheist and a pro-abort, a child sacrificer. We'd be screwed. No, we wouldn't. We'd still have logic on our side, but man, I love that guy so much. Horn, author of Persuasive Pro-Life, wrote a recent essay, Catholics Can't Be Pro-Choice, in which he argued that all reasonable people should oppose legal abortion because it is taking over life. Yada, yada. Ellis, I don't know who this Sheila is. Um, hey, babe, my wife is in the comment section. Yep, just put the grocery list in the live chat and I'll go get it soon. Ellis author of a recent essay, Why I'm a Pro-Choice Christian and Believe You Should Be Too, God Have Mercy on Her Soul. One of her biggest criticisms of abortion rights, okay, first of all, stop abusing language. It's not a right. You don't have a right to kill innocent human beings. Uh, is that often these activists fail to support other political causes that preserve the life of the children after being born. First of all, okay, that's like a terrible reason to therefore be for the sacrifice of children. To say, this group of people is against sacrificing innocent human beings, but they're not super great on other issues concerning innocent little human beings. Therefore, we should be for the sacrificing of little innocent human beings. That doesn't follow. I mean, at best, it could just be a nice criticism. All right, let's have a look. How does your faith shape your position on abortion? I really hope that they aren't just paraphrasing Trent. I hope they're actually reading, or maybe he wrote to them. Let's see. My faith, I love Trent. He's so friggin' laser focused. I'm sure this is going to be great. I haven't read this, by the way, in case you were wondering. My faith informs me that God created human beings in his image. He loves human beings, and he wants us to share that lo same love and promote justice towards every other human being. Since my faith teaches me that every single human being, every single member of, our, member of our species is equal in value and dignity, then my faith informs me that I should never directly kill an innocent member of our species just because they're unwanted. My faith informs me that every single human being, from the moment they are conceived until the moment they die, deserves equal protection under the law. Boom! And it's really good that they have a Benedictine medal there. I uh, wonder how many people are reading this and are screeching in horror and not knowing why. Ellis says, I do believe in the sanctity of human life. All right, sweet. So she's also against abortion. Let's keep going. Oh, no, no, there's more. And I would love to see a world with less abortions. Why? Why? You, you just said that you're pro-choice and that others should be pro-choice too. By pro-choice, you mean should be child sacrifices or encouragers of child sacrifice. Why should there be less abortions? What's, what's wrong with abortion? I mean, presumably, if you want less of the thing, you mustn't think it's a great thing. Let's continue. But I also know that banning abortion is going to mostly harshly affect people in society who are already marginalized. It'll harshly affect people by not allowing them to kill their children, okay? And rich white women, oh, 
are always going to be able to have access to safe, affordable abortion. Okay. Making abortion illegal is going to disproportionately affect young women, women in poverty, women of color in rural areas, women who don't have a support system. You know what's funny? Um, Pro-aborts or the pro-child sacrifices, which I really do think we should call them, um, they always beat around the bush. Like, here's the question. What is the unborn? It's all you have to answer. And I'll help you out. Um, if it's growing, isn't it alive? Yeah. If it has human parents, isn't it human? Yeah. All right, so the unborn is a human being. Yeah. All right. So is it ever okay to kill an innocent human being? Presumably it's innocent. So. Oh, well, what about women in rural areas? Okay, we can discuss that at a later point. Let's go back to Horn because he's uh, much more convincing and correct. What Bible passages do you cite to justify your position? The Bible does not explicitly mention abortion, so it doesn't say that abortion itself is wrong. But it also doesn't say that infanticide is wrong or that pedophilia is wrong. Boom! Good job, Trent, you little rascal. Instead, I use scripture to inform me with general principles. The Bible is clear in Exodus 23, 7 and Proverbs 6, 16 through 17 that it is wrong to kill innocent human beings. Proverbs 6 says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. If the Bible says that it's wrong to kill innocent human beings and science and sound reasoning tell us that human embryos and human fetuses are human beings, then the Bible informs me that it is wrong to kill them. Pretty bloody good, isn't it? The Bible says that it's wrong to lynch black, doesn't say it's wrong to lynch black people, but clearly it is wrong because the Bible says it's wrong to kill innocent human beings. That would apply to all born and unborn human beings. What's more relevant is the Bible says human life exists in the womb. Luke one forty one, And the Bible prohibits killing innocent human beings. Exodus 20.13. This prohibition would apply to abortion as it would to any other homicide. Because the unborn are just smaller, more dependent human beings, those differences don't nullify their alien, inalienable rights. All right, inalienable right to life. Listen to me. Go and subscribe to Trent's podcast. I'm going to put a link below. I haven't done that yet, but it's called The Council of Trent. He's been a good friend for a long time, and he's just somebody I turn to frequently and be like, am I, am I off here? Is this right? What do you think? He's just such a, a smart dude, and um, he's just a good man. He's a good man. A good person. I wasn't tearing up there. I just, something happened in my throat. All right. Let's see what Ellis has to say. We have to be really careful when we try to take a topic as complicated as abortion. Okay. It's funny that we always want to make complicated those issues we wish to justify. You know? Well, I mean, yeah, committing adultery, sure. Like, I shouldn't do that. But look, it's really complicated. You don't understand my relationship with my wife. You don't understand how attracted I am to Susie. <laughs> it's not complicated. Just don't kill innocent human beings. That, that's it. Is that going to be difficult? Are people going to be in situations where it would be easier if they did? Yes. Same thing with adultery. Same thing with homosexual acts. Same thing with thievery. <laughs> same things with child abuse. Like, don't you understand how difficult it is to be a parent? Like, sometimes parents don't sleep at all, you know, because their kids are up crying and, and, and they don't have enough money to feed them and, and they just lash out. It's complicated. Okay, but don't, okay, but the question you need to ask is, is it okay for a parent to, like, abuse their child? It's, people in rural areas. The Bible is an incredibly complicated book. There we go again. <laughs> okay, what about racism? I mean, the Bible's a complicated book. It's difficult just to kind of say racism is wrong, you know, across the board. It's complicated. Complicated. Everything's complicated. When I think about the different kinds of scriptures that people who are anti-abortion pull out, they are often about murder, sexual immorality, and blaming women. Well, um, let's see. Did Trent do that? Well, yeah, he did talk about killing innocent human life. They are so taken out of context. Don't kill the innocent. That's what the Bible says. Abortion kills the innocent. Therefore, the Bible says don't kill the innocent. Not complicated. You're making it complicated because you want to believe something evil. 
It is early. It's crikey. It's quite early. Hi, everybody. Hi, 383 of you. <laughs> this is why I have drink pounding espresso. Ah, let's see. They are so taken out of context. I fall back to drawing from the life and ministry of Christ, who was for the sacrificing of children. No, no, he wasn't. <laughs> Not at all. Jesus really advocated for women in a beautiful, unique way. Right. Just like Nancy Pelosi. I mean, that's really what it is. You have a grandmother up on stage almost in tears because she would like more dead babies. She's just a good Catholic, you know. She's she's who Jesus would want you to be like. Uh, even by being with women and speaking to women, he was honoring them. Yes. Breaking social conventions. Okay, what do you mean by that? Like, where is this leading? Like, the social convention of, like, you shouldn't kill the innocent? Do you know how insulting it is to say to a woman that you won't be fulfilled raising your children lovingly at home and loving your husband, and instead you should have somebody slaughter them and go to the workplace so that you can be equal to men? Yeah, you know how gross and demeaning that is? Both in Jesus' day and our own day, women's bodies are too often tossed aside. Right? Obviously. But answer the bloody question. There are biblical stories where Jesus advocated for and, and empowered women. Okay, yeah. So what does that mean? Where are you driving at, darling? Women should be respected and honored. Therefore, they should be able to have somebody kill their child. Therefore, child sacrifice is okay. Bit of a leap. Bit of a friggin' stretch, wouldn't you say? Oh, it's just painful. All right, let's go back to Trent Horn so we can have like a breath of sanity before diving back into this Ellis chick. What's the biggest myth people have about people who share your position? That was nice of CNN to ask. The biggest myth that people have about my position on abortion is that it's merely a religious position. <laughs> and I mean, CNN is just, I mean, good for them, good for CNN for publishing this article, but all the photos are about Christianity and the whole thing is about Two Christians both disagree. Therefore, who knows? The biggest myth that people have about... Yeah, blah, blah, blah. There are many religious people who are opposed to abortion, just like there are many religious people who are opposed, who are opposed racial segregation in the United States. Opposition to radical segregation and opposition to abortion are not merely religious positions. Rather, these are human rights issues because they're grounded in a basic truth that any reasonable people can come to which is that we ought to give every single human being equal respect un and protection under the law. Just as there are no morally relevant differences between black and white people to justify whites mistreating blacks. Great, great. It's such a, I mean, it's true. And it's also just a great strategy. I don't know how many people reading CNN would be like, racism. I don't know anybody actually who's like, racism. I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't met one. Um... Unborn humans are smaller, less developed, and more dependent than we are, but newborn infants are also smaller, less developed than we are, and very dependent, but those reasons wouldn't justify killing a child, and they don't justify saying that unborn are not persons and can be killed. Okay, what's the question again? Biggest myth. Oh, let's see. What's the biggest myth about Christians who are pro- uh, a child sacrifice. I wish people would understand that you can be a Christian and not oppose abortion. All right, let me see. Let me see. All right. You can be a Christian. You can be a Christian and be okay with child sacrifice. All right. Let's just, just all right. Just because somebody is pro-choice, read child sacrifice, doesn't mean that they hate life or babies or the Bible or God. The power of the religious right Political terms. Interesting. Notice that Trent hasn't done that. Is so strong that so many Christians have a hard time conceiving that somebody could be on the other side of the issue. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to understand why somebody who claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ would be for the inflicting of deadly violence upon other innocent human beings. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. I'm having a difficult time understanding. it. But to echo Randall Barmer... I don't know who that is, a historian who is an authority on the religious right. The religious right was created to oppose desegregated schools. Okay. The change in focus to being anti-abortion took place to gain political power. People have very real commitments and moral beliefs on both sides of it. 
So I'm not saying that someone who is for life is corrupt and just seeking power. Well, that's nice. Thank you. But that is how the religious right movement was founded. It's always going to be tainted because of that. This is called the genetic fallacy. The genetic, genetic fallacy occurs when you seek to invalidate a person's argument based on how it originated. Now, I don't for a moment concede the point that Ellis is making, but even if I did, she'd be committing a logical fallacy. Just because somebody comes to a belief because of bad reasons, it doesn't mean that belief's false. Can a person who opposes your position on abortion still legitimately call themselves a Christian? Ooh, let's see what Trentius Hornius says about this. There can be Christians who support legal abortion. Yeah, that's right. And we'll get to that. Just like there were many Christians who supported legal slavery. Being a Christian means that you have a valid baptism and you believe in the central tenets of the Christian faith. That's right. Sometimes in our zeal to oppose abortion, we'll say, Okay, if you're for abortion, you're not a Christian. It's like, no, no. Somebody can believe in God and believe in Jesus Christ, accept the scriptures, etc., etc., and then hold evil beliefs. They can be evil Christians, in other words. Um, however, a Christian who endorses legal slavery or endorses legal abortion stands in contradiction to the moral law that Christianity gives us. So while they would be a Christian, they would be in contradiction of the law that Christ has given us to protect the innocent, to protect the weak, and they will stand in judgment for violating that law as Christians. People are free to have any religious beliefs, including pro-choice Christian ones. But they aren't always free to act on those beliefs. Some religions teach that polygamy, slavery, female genital mutilation, or honor, honor killing should be legal. But the law must protect all innocent human beings, both born and unborn, from all harms, including harms done in the name of religion. Okay, Ellis, what do you got to say? How much more of this do we have? All right, this is it, I think. I obviously disagree with people who oppose abortion. All right, so here's a Christian who obviously disagrees that people should oppose child sacrifice. But that doesn't mean that they can't be Christian. Well, that's good. I'm really happy to hear that Ella says that I can still be a Christian and oppose child sacrifice. That's terrific. Um, who am I to say who can or cannot be a Christian? That's really on God's business, only God's business. I think we have to stop this intense gatekeeping that we have on Christianity, particularly when our gatekeeping is just based off of an issue like abortion that is not talked about in the Bible. You see? Like, it's funny, like this Ellis Sheila, and by the way, when I say Sheila, I'm not, I'm not being disrespectful. That's just kind of how I talk. So apologies if that comes off that way. I don't mean it to be. I can call Trent a, I called Trentius Trentius Hornius the other just a moment ago. I don't mean I'm not being disrespectful to him either. I'm just I'm just having fun drinking my coffee, chatting with you. So I, I hope that's understood. But you notice that Trent brings up logic, science, principles, and Ellis is bringing up the religious right, and then it's a sort of sola scriptura kind of thing, like the fact that the Bible doesn't say, "Oh, by the way, abortion is wrong." The thing is, like, even if even if the Bible did say that, she would still find a way around it. Just like I'm sure, I don't know her, but I'm sure she finds a way around justifying sodomy, even though that's explicitly condemned in Scripture. Somebody go find out for me. Maybe I'm wrong, and if I'm wrong, I will apologize. But I got a feeling that Ellis wouldn't be convinced by those Scriptures against sodomy, and I'm pretty sure she wouldn't be convinced that abortion's wrong if the Bible said, Abortion's wrong with those words. But like Trent mentioned at the beginning of this article we've been reading, doesn't say anything about infanticide being wrong, doesn't say anything about pedophilia being wrong, and yet pretty sure Alice would be against those things. When Jesus asked people to follow him, you didn't have to pass some sort of moral or political checklist. Right. Right. That's right. He invited everyone to follow him. And that's why I said at the beginning of this show, if you're a woman who's had an abortion, I love you. You're beautiful. Repent and follow Jesus. Join me, another sinner. Let's follow Jesus together. Wouldn't that be cool? I'm a bad Catholic. You can be a bad Catholic with me. And we can receive the grace of God together and become saints. Isn't that wonderful? Or if you're a fella who's encouraged somebody to have an abortion, repent. You were a coward. You were a scoundrel. Just like if you're a woman, you had an abortion. That's disgusting. Shouldn't have done it. Evil. You were selfish. Repent. I'm, I'm a selfish bastard myself, I, and I, I try to repent every day of this. But 
you don't have to let your past sins define who the future you will be. Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. So join us. Join us. God, just like the wounds of Christ became glory. He kept, why did he keep his wounds after his resurrection? Because it was by those wounds that he brought about the redemption of the world. Similarly, Christ wants to use your wounds to speak to the world. So if you are somebody who's, some of the most powerful witnesses I've seen are these lovely women who have had an abortion, recognized it was wrong, which is, takes a tremendous amount of courage. It seems to me it would be much easier just to rationalize and justify the evil you did, you know. I know I've fallen into that trap. But instead they repented and then you see them out there helping other women, helping them heal. Oh, you're so powerful. You have so much power. Okay, let's see. I grew up in West Texas in a very religious and very conservative environment. I know so many people who are anti-abortion because of their faith. I obviously disagree with them personally because of my faith, but I don't think that means that they aren't good people or they aren't good Christians, much less... Okay, I'm really glad that Ellis doesn't think I'm a bad Christian because I oppose child sacrifice. Cool. All right, that was good. Go, Trent! It's fantastic. Fan-bloody-tastic. Oh, I want to share... I want to share a meme with you that I saw today. It made me laugh so hard. Let's see if I can put it up here. I don't know if I can. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, if it weren't for Donald Trump, no matter what you think about the guy, we wouldn't have had three excellent justices. We would have had Hillary Clinton's justices and uh, Roe versus Wade wouldn't have been overturned. So thank you, Donald Trump. Well, fellas, what else should we do? Let's go over here. I saw this on Daily Wire. I, I was I woke up this morning being like, I wonder how much of the country's on fire. That's what I wondered. And it doesn't seem like a lot's happening, honestly. Have you guys been seeing stuff? Um... I mean, you've got protests. Look at this. Look at this Sheila here. Defend Roe by any means necessary. You know that means violence, don't you? You know when AOC said yesterday into the streets, she wasn't talking about a peaceful protest. You know, there's so many death threats right now being thrown about on Twitter. And to my knowledge, Twitter's doing nothing about it. Anyway, protests, people getting punched in the face. Sweet, good, glad. Not glad. Iowa, a group of protesters appeared to try to stop a truck driving through the area. Okay, sweet. The truck reportedly ran over the foot of one of the <laughs> protesters. <laughs> All right, here's my, here's my uh, opinion on trucks running over feet. If you're an idiot, uh, and you can know that you're an idiot if you're trying to stop a truck from moving and it runs over your foot, you fully deserved it, and I have no sympathy for you. Police in the Nationals' capital prepared with riot gear. Good for them. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Little bit -bit -boo. Hey, can I just pause for a moment and ask all 608 of you to please subscribe to my channel? I'm almost at a quarter of a million subscribers, and uh, that's pretty cool. I would love to hit a million subscribers before YouTube bans me, so help me out. <laughs> click subscribe, click that bell button. And that'll be the that'll that'd be that'd be great. That'd be the shiznits. All right, I wanna let's go to Twitter. Can we go to Twitter? Is that okay? We're gonna go to Twitter. So I was sharing that earlier. That uh, Trent, God bless him. Let's let's retweet Trent. What a guy. All right, let's let's have a look at some people. Let's see what Hillary Clinton. Ugh. Let's see. Is this her? I don't know. It's hard to know. No, it's definitely not her. All right, I won't do it. Let's see. What, oh, no, Donald Trump's not on Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter forever. I guess somebody who runs my Twitter account. You understand? Let's see what Joden, Jodenus Biden has had to say. Oh, God have mercy on his soul. I really mean that. God have mercy on his soul. Immaculate heart of Mary. Pray for Joe Biden. It's a sad day for the country. Nearly 50 years ago, Roe versus Wade was decided. 
Today, the Supreme Court of the United States expressly took away a constitutional right. Consti These people, this is called an abuse of language. This is sophistry. This is flattery. Here's the thing. If you don't believe in truth, what do you have left? All right. Like, if truth exists and we can know it, and we should live in conformity with it, if you do not live in conformity with it, then I argue lay out premises that lead to a conclusion so that you will know the truth and live from the truth. Okay. Now, you might not choose to because you might be a coward. You might choose to be evil and vicious. But truth exists. Now, if truth doesn't exist and I want you to do something, what's left? Power. And that's why these people bastardize the language. They, they, they say things like reproductive rights. Okay, if somebody's pregnant, reproduction's already happened. Right? You're, you're, you're misusing language. We've got to stop lying. Lying is so evil. Say what you mean. Speak clearly. Ah, Jeff Bezos. What's he got to say? Anything? No. Who else should we look up? Uh, what about... Um, you tell me in the comment section. Who should I look up? Kamala Harris? I'm not spelling that right, am I? Where is she? Oh, there she is. Is Kamala Harris throwing a basketball? She's better than me. Elon Musk. Yeah, let's look at what's he saying. Elon Musk. People. Okay, that's what I want to do. What's he got to say? Yo, look at that. Oh, that's May 24th. That didn't. 7 Eleven, that's funny. No, he does not say anything. What about Joey Rogan? Nothing. What about Bishop Barron? Bishop Barron. Hey, good for you, Bishop. Friends. Oh, yeah, I said this yesterday. Today is the time to rejoice as we celebrate the Supreme Court Justice's decision. That's awesome. You know what I'm a bit concerned about? Let's see. Father James Martin. Where's that fella? I want to see his full-throated rejoicing in, in this, but I don't... Um, I don't know his handle. Father James Martin. That's not him. No, I don't know. This has got to be very boring for you, 648 people. Sorry that we're, uh, we've, we've, we've come to a snag here. The Constitution does not confer the right to abortion. Oh, look at that. Look at that woman's face. <laughs> oh, good for you, darling. Glory to Jesus Christ. On the sacred heart of Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Catholics for choice. Let's see what they're going to say. Catholics for choice. Oh, I'm about to throw up. About to throw up. Catholics for Choice, that was in January, so let's keep going, 18 hours ago. I said this when the, the leaked opinion came out, but it's worth repeating. The Constitution does not explicitly protect female citizenship. Your rights are based on the fact that sometimes mostly male justices felt like being generous. Oh, for goodness sake, it's just disgusting, isn't it? Oh, here's some fellow here. It's difficult to overstate how devastating this day is. Well, get over it. 
But I'm here with Catholics for Choice, holding space for all my loved ones who are feeling angry, afraid, helpless. All right, let's quit. Treat that. You know, as I said, I used to be pro-abortion, so I, you know, and I'm a grave sinner, so forgive me, you know. But these, this is just because we've been sinners, just because we've committed grave evil, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be calling people to repentance, right? A hypocrite isn't somebody who uh, doesn't live up to their own standards. All of us are like that, right? None of us live up to our own standards. A hypocrite is somebody who tells everybody to do something or not to do something, but they think themselves the exception. So if I was here saying, don't have an abortion, it's evil, and then I was like, but I'm okay doing it, that, that's hypocritical. But if you're a sinner, and you fall to these different sins, like maybe pornography or fornication or sodomy or something like that. If you repent of them and you encourage others not to do them, you're not a hypocrite. Like you're just a human being who's a sinner. Just thought I'd throw that out. History. I hate when people do this. History will look back at this moment as yet another time the institution of the church upheld white. Oh, for God's sake, white supremacy. Again, this is an abuse of power. We say, shouldn't kill unborn people, probably, because they're innocent. And you go, racist. It's comical. And it's sad that the woke left child sacrifices have made something evil, namely, which is, which is evil, namely racism. That's a seriously evil thing. And they've made a friggin' meme out of it by calling everything racist that they don't like. They've trivialized something gravely evil by calling math racist. Look that up. Calling uh, fidelity and marriage like that's like a white supremacist thing. It's just, it's pathetic. Oh, good on the Jesuits. The Society of Jesus in the United States welcomes the Supreme Court's decision to overrule Roe versus Wade. Abortion is a massive injustice in our society and today's ruling is a critical step forward. Good for them. <laughs> it's, it's a shame that I'm surprised to see the Jesuits on board, but that's great. So the Supreme Court wants to remake this country against our will into a heavily armed, patriarchal, minority ruled, minority ruled, white supremacist, Christian nationalist theocracy. Got it. Okay. So proud of this fellow representing Catholics for Choice. All right. Religious freedom demands abortion rights. Stop calling it rights. I will aid and, oh God, have mercy on these poor lost souls. Blessed Mother of God, help them. What else should we look up? Who else should we check out? <laughs> Planned Parenthood? I wonder if they're celebrating the decision. The court has failed us! Just remember, it's really important just to like clear away the rhetoric. What are they, What is an abortion? The abortion is killing an innocent human being. All right, so that's what abortion is. All right, now tell me again why that's wrong. Rural areas, racism. Uh huh. Hmm. Oh no, we've got to check out Elizabeth Warren. What has she got to say, little poor Elizabeth Warren? The very idea that six extremists. <laughs> That's the other thing. Why are they extreme? Oh, because they said um, they said that states should determine whether or not ab abortion is legal or not, and the intricacies of that. And what's abortion? Killing of the killing of innocent human life. Right. So the states, instead of you know nationally, the states should decide whether and how we can sacrifice innocent children. Oh, it's friggin' extreme. That's only extreme if you're a Satanist. We are not powerless. <sighs> Here's what I'm fighting for. Expanding our Senate majority so we can eliminate the filibuster. Oh, shut up. Looking for a way to channel your anger right now? <laughs> Here are two suggestions for how about, like, pray. You could pray. You could repent. You could channel your anger that way. All right, let's think of two suggestions. Or, one, repent of your sin 
and two, uh, receive the grace God wants for you. Isn't this fun? You guys watching me tweet in real time? You know, there's a lot of people pissed off with me on Twitter lately. And I, uh, you know, fair enough. Uh, I'm, you know, a sinner and uh, whatever bad things you think about me, believe me, I'm way worse than you think. <laughs> but I do tend to think that Christianity has come to be synonymous with like just being nice. So if you say something pointed and that hurts somebody's tummy, they criticize you for being uncharitable, forgetting that Christ called people brood of vipers, you know, whitewashed tombs, throwing over tables in the temple. Now, I'm not Christ and neither are you, but sometimes you have to say something. Isn't that funny? You got to say something, even if it hurts people's feelings. Like you could say something like this. Abortion is gravely evil and demonic. Have you had an abortion? All right. You did a gravely evil and demonic thing. You are a beloved daughter of God or you're a beloved son of God. Pete Buttigieg, Jedgy. What did he have to say? Oh, gosh. Oh, dear God, here we go. For 50 years, this nation respected a woman's constitutional right to make her own decisions. Today, the court held that government officials will decide instead. Our work continues. All right, well, my work continues as well. We want to abortion... We want to abolish abortion nationwide. I want a national ban on abortion. That's what I want. And then I want to undo the ridiculous thing that made for so-called same-sex marriage. I want to do that. Um, see, here's the thing. I mean, I've said it before. This is not a left versus right thing, even though the left seem to be far more insane than the right. The right has capitulated on many of these topics. How many people would say, I'm a conservative, but... They're for no-fault divorce. They're for contraception. They think fornication is okay. They're even for things like sodomy, IVF, right? pornography even. I mean, there was a big conservative convention over the last couple of years where they tried to get a porn performer to come and speak. Now, I think they changed their opinion, but I mean, that just goes to, sh goes to prove my point that that would ever be considered. So it's not right versus left. I think it's like reality versus illusion. It's those who are pro-sexual revolution, which is a false thing, and those who are for Christian sexual morality. <sighs> Golly. Oh, there she is. Kamala! Happy Pride. Hey, I got an idea. I want to run by you. Can I just spitball with you guys for a second? You can let me know in the live chat what you think about this. I am so proud of the Supreme Court right now. Proud. I was thinking, what if what if from now on we call June Pride Month? I don't know. It just, I'm just an idea. And, and it's amazing, really, that, that God didn't just flood us, you know? In fact, in, in Genesis... I, yeah, that's right. He put a, a rainbow was the sign that he gave not to destroy it. What if from now on to celebrate the overturning of Roe versus Wade, we referred to June as Pride Month and we maybe we could just use maybe rainbow flags. I don't know. Just just to celebrate that uh, and, and, and thanks to God. But um, oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Uh, Kamala Harris is maybe she stole the idea. I don't know. OK. All right. What has she got to say here? Millions of women in America will go to bed tonight without access to the health care. Oh, is it is it health care? Is that what that is? When you when you when you pay somebody to murder, to sacrifice your unborn child, that's health. Is it care? No, OK. Or are you a liar? Yeah, it's that one, I think. Reproductive health care. This is what you do when you don't believe in truth. You just manipulate language. You just say false things. Just say lies. Without access to the same health care. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Like, look at the amount. You gotta, how, how much do you have to untangle here? Health care. All right. Murdering innocent people isn't health care. Reproductive health. If someone's pregnant, they've already reproduced. No one's against reproductive health. 
I agree. Nobody should be forced to have sex. I'm against that. If somebody forces somebody to have sex, it's called rape. I think they should have their penis cut off or at least be put in prison. All right. They have without access to the same health care. There we go again. Reproductive health care. I mean, this this is so fist free. It's 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 great. All right. Oh yeah, let's look at Jordan Peterson. Let's see what's he doing. Dr. Jordan Peterson. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't comment on this. Let's see. Doesn't look like he's saying much. I mean, he's a Canadian, of course, but... Yeah. What's this? Oh, dear Lord. All right. Um, thanks for being here, everybody. This has been fun. Thanks for joining me. It's like we had 700 people just show up so I could chat with you, read some news. It's the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Pray your Holy Rosary today. Pray your Akathist to Mary today. She's so good. She's so powerful. She makes the demons tremble. In the Akathist to Mary, which is a beautiful prayer, she is referred to as the wound, uh, wound of demons <laughs> that they haven't been able to recover from. She's so good. She's so good. Mary Immaculate, pray for us. Oh, let's do Sam Harris before we go. Samuel Harris. <clears throat> oh, he hasn't said anything. What about dorky bums? Richard Dawkins. Hey, right after this, I'm going to take some comments from you guys. Okay, so if, you, if, you're, in, if you're watching live, don't go anywhere. I, I want to take your questions. I'll put your question up on the screen or your comment and, and we'll have a look at them together. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Richard Dawkins is such a freaking joke. Look what he just posted. How thoughtful of God to arrange matters so that wherever you happen to be born, the logical religion always turns out to be the true one. This is just just so stupid. This again is called the um the uh the uh genetic fallacy. For those of you who just showed up, the genetic fallacy happens when you seek to invalidate a person's belief or or opinion based on how it originated. Listen to see. This is why it's silly, right? Because it cuts both ways. What he's saying is, um, how interesting that people happen to be part of the religion, you know, or, or that religion's based on geography. You know, if you were born in the South, no wonder you're a Christian. You're born somewhere else, no wonder you're. A, but see, it cuts both ways. Like, what if I said, okay, the only reason you're an atheist is, and I'm stealing this from Trent Horn. The only reason you're an atheist is because you were born in Portland and you've been raised on a vegan diet. And so your brain hasn't had the nutrients necessary to develop such that you can understand arguments for God's existence. That's funny, but it's, it's, it's also fallacious. Oh, gosh, this guy. This guy. All right, let's go. Oh, that was a fly. Let's go over here. I'm going to shut this bad boy down and take some of your questions. All right, so if you have a question or if you have something you want to say, we can, we can, we can, we can do that. Boom. I am something percent sure that Mother Mary is the one who interceded for the unborn babies and protecting them. God is so good. Yeah, man. How many rosaries have been prayed for the overturning of Roe versus Wade? 
atheists are super boring. Some are. Some are like really intelligent and interesting. But Dawkins is super boring. Wow. John says, what do you think of Roe versus Wade being overturned on the Feast of the Sacred Heart? <laughs> what do you think about this devotion? Well, devotion to the Sacred Heart is devotion to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loves you with a human heart. You know, he loves you, John. He loves me. Uh, I think it's really great that uh, the Supreme Court decided to... Uh... <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, it's just beautiful. It's, you know, there are no coincidences. This is providence. Thank you, Jesus. How do we keep the ball rolling? Be holy. Repent of your own sin. Love your families well. Become healthy. Keep fighting. Let's get really intelligent, faithful Catholics into good positions in government, perhaps. Let's have them start Catholic communities around the country. And I don't mean gated communities. You know, I mean like Steubenville, Ohio. Come join us here if you want. Raise your kids well. Don't let them use social media. You know, let's let's have faithful priests. Let's flock to their parishes. If you have priests who aren't faithful, let's let's abandon those parishes. Read super chat. Somebody said, "Ah, well, if you, if you send a super chat in, I, you know, you can you can do that." But I, I, I don't think I saw a super chat. I haven't been looking, so you might want to send it again. How do I convince others abortion isn't a right? You probably won't be able to because those who are pro-child sacrifice very rarely are open to logic. I think we were under the misimpression back in the 80s, 70s, 90s that abortion was, well, it's not really a child, you see. And so they pretended it was about logic. And then we went, science shows. And they went, we don't care. I fully expect in the next 10 years that there will be full out infanticide in particular states, like children outside the womb being injected in the back of the neck and killed. I fully expect that. How do you convince them it's not a right? Maybe begin by asking them what they think a right is. You say you have a right to kill the unborn. Okay, I'm open to that. What's a right? What does that mean? Where do rights come from? I think those sorts of questions would be helpful. Caleb says, isn't it amazing how much of the faithful have been praying for this? Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Ethan says, my spiritual advisor wasn't happy about the decision. Should I keep? Yeah, you should leave him immediately. Yeah, if you're a Catholic and you're sad that less babies, fewer babies will be killed, you're a horrible Catholic and you should repent immediately. You should definitely not have this person as a spiritual advisor. That ought to disturb you. You're right to have that disturb you. Shield says, I pray for the conversion of hearts and minds to understand truth and reject the fear that drives their arguments. Anyway, today, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Very powerful. What do you think of non-religious arguments against abortion? I mean, that's all I, that I just get, that's all I think is helpful, really. When Aquinas talks about arguing against Muslims, he makes the point that we shouldn't invoke the Holy Scriptures since they do not accept them. So we need to argue from the premises the others accept. So here's an argument. It's always wrong to kill innocent human beings. Abortion kills innocent human beings. Therefore, abortion is always wrong. That's a non-religious argument. When do you think they'll start banning politicians for the Eucharist? Well, Cordelioni did. Good for him. We need to see more of that for the good of their souls. They commit sacrilege if you're a public notorious sinner, you know, and, and you're receiving Eucharist. You're committing sacrilege. And so it's out of love that bishops should tell these politicians that they may not approach the Blessed Sacrament. They ought to repent publicly. Holy Rosary Warrior says, are you concerned about the threats to churches that have been made? Or do you think it's fear mongering? I don't know. I mean, obviously, it'd be a sad thing if people started attacking churches. 
but we've we've been told to get ready for persecution so let's try to love those who are persecuting us you have a beautiful name and if i try to pronounce it i will screw it up katarizina oh so sorry Overwhelmed by the mercy of God, praise the Lord. What advice do you have for receiving God's grace in areas of weakness? Oh, sister, here's my advice. Abandon yourself to Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus, I give you everything. And I abandon myself to your providence. And I love you. And then tell him that you aren't going to wait until tomorrow to tell him you love him. You're not going to wait until a day in the future where you might feel that you love him. You're going to tell him, you say, Jesus, you know all things. You know that I love you. And then you can say to him, I thank you that you love me with inexpressible tenderness, that I am a delight to you, Jesus. And that even my sin, when I repent of it, delights you because surely it's a delightful thing for the Savior to save. I thank you, Jesus, for everything. I thank you even for my sins because you have used them to bring me closer to you. You're so good and so beautiful, and I never want to offend you again, Jesus. I want to spend the rest of my life glorifying you. And anything that is within me that is against you, contrary to you, take out, Lord. You know how weak I am. If you leave me, I'll fall in a moment, so don't leave me, Lord Jesus. Just tell him how much you love him. He loves you so much, darling. You're so beautiful to him. He delights in you. This instinct you have to believe that he disapproves of you all the time or that he's upset with you, this is the enemy. All right, Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, Satan is called the accuser of our brethren. Satan's job is to accuse you. But in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit, what's he called? He's called the paraclete. What does that word mean? That's a funny word, paraclete. It means defense attorney. He is your defender. Oh, he's so good. He's so good, <laughs> and he's going to make us saints. I'm going to be a saint. You know that? Why? Because I'm so good? No, I'm an abyss of weakness. I'm wretched, far more wretched than I even understand. But he's merciful, and he's given me a desire to be a saint. And I know he wouldn't give me that desire unless he gave me the means to do it. What are the means? Himself. Thank you, Jesus. I love you so much. All of the world's delights are... Tasteless, bland, boring. You're everything, Lord. Let me tell you what happens when you come into relationship with Jesus, all right? It's like it's like walking down <clears throat> a city street. Um, it's nighttime. And there are neon signs everywhere. And they, they're dazzling. And they're charming. And you're drawn to them. But then the sun begins to rise and all of those neon lights lose their appeal. And you just don't care about them anymore. And that's sort of like the delights of the world, you know, like lust, like pride, all that. It just fades away. It's like, I don't, I don't even want that. I have Jesus and he's everything. All right, I'm sorry, I'm preaching. He's so good, man. He loves you so much. Manny says, do you think the reason many Catholics today support abortion and many morally problematic issues is partly fault of the priests in their parishes? Yes, that aren't even that, that are afraid to even touch upon the topics. Yes. I also think it's because of my own cowardice. I mean, I could have been addressing this far before I did. I could have been doing it in a more manly way. God have mercy on me, a sinner. How do I explain to my niece with love that it isn't about a woman's health, it's about a woman's life, a human life? What you could say is you should listen to her and ask her questions. So if she says, this is about health care, you can say, okay, what do you mean by that? Well, a woman should have a right to do what she wants with her own body. Oh, I agree with that, you say. No one should have control over somebody else's body. In fact, you might say to her, isn't that why you object to the government now restricting because you think they're trying to do something with your body? Yes. Right. Yeah. What is abortion? What happens in abortion? What do you mean? Well, just like, what is it? Well, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's about me being to decide, having to decide whether, it, you know, yada, yada, yada. You've got to get down to what is the unborn. 
Like what's happening in abortion? Is it a big deal for women? Like should people be traumatized by abortion? Or is abortion like not a big deal? Is it like a root canal? Which hurts, but you know, isn't morally questionable. Ask questions and love her, love her, pray for her. <sighs> this is fun, guys. I love you guys. Good day, Matt, says Jacob. Preach, says Kyle. Pray for Kansas, says Jason Watson. We have a vote on a constitutional amendment on August 2nd. Basically overturn Roe. <laughs> cool. If you pray the rosary, the devil will come for you even harder, but God will protect you. you. Pray the Holy Rosary. It's a beautiful thing. Can we even actually have a conversation with people who refuse to believe an unborn life? Just a clump of cells. Or would it be better to pray for them? I think do both. I mean, sometimes you get the impression as you chat with somebody that you're just dealing with wall-to-wall -wall refusal and ignorance. But it's important to talk. What clump of cells. I mean, the person talking to you is a clump of cells, I suppose. But we, we need to pray for them. We need to, I, I think a lot of these people are influenced by demons. I'm not saying if you're pro-abortion, you're necessarily influenced by demons. But I think the, the demonic is absolutely at work here. Abortion is child sacrifice, you understand. Like, this is paganism. We're sacrificing our child. It's a demonic act. It really is. That's why we need prayer. That's why it was the little old ladies praying their rosaries outside of abortion clinics that made this happen. Hey, thanks for the super chat, Daniel. You say, what role do Catholic schools play in in turning young Catholics away from the church. Yeah, I think many Catholic schools are hopeless and I wouldn't send my kids there. I don't say that in an arrogant sort of way, but just to say like, I really am a big fan of homeschooling. And I think if you were to take your kids out of Catholic school and just let them read good books on the couch, they'd end up far more well-rounded than many kids in Catholic schools. I'm not condemning all Catholic schools. Obviously there are good Catholic schools. Um, I only wish I could thank you in person. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you so much, Matt, for bringing God's life. Amen, yeah. It's not about laws, sex, or other things. It's about the hearth of man. When we come to dealing like this, please pray for Italy and the Vatican because here the situation is not so lightened. That's a really great point, Jacob. You won't know if they won't listen if you don't try to talk to them first. That's a fantastic line, Jacob. You're a champion. Yeah, I mean, I was once pro-abortion, and now I'm obviously not. Something happened. So the idea that people can't change their opinion on things is false, you know. Jag Dwer says, I always made the joke, I am Catholic despite going to Catholic schools, not because of it. Yeah, me too. It's almost like they know what the consequences of their actions are. They pro-baby killers want no responsibility. And we should point out, like, none of us want responsibility. I mean, we're all cowards, aren't we? Like, to some degree, not all of us, but I mean, to some degree, like, we justify our sin. Like the fact that you spend more time listening to Daily Wire than reading scriptures is not good. And you justify it by saying, well, I need to be up to date, you know, if I'm going to interact with the world. You see? Like we all justify our weakness. So it's, it's, if we're going to accuse people of justifying their sin, we need, we need to first accuse ourselves, I think. Robert says, Matt, do you realize that all of a sudden the left knows what a woman is? Yeah, they're talking about women. I would highly recommend Matt Walsh's documentary, by the way. It was very beautiful. Some people who didn't watch the film, I even saw some Catholics online were criticizing it, and they even admitted they didn't watch the film. It's actually a very beautiful film. You know, he talks with victims of those who quote-unquote transitioned. It was very lovely. He, nowhere is Matt making fun of people with gender dysphoria. That would be an evil thing to do, to make fun or 
a, you know, mock anybody who's struggling with gender dysphoria. That sounds like a horrible thing. What needs to be mocked are those wicked people who are lying and are pushing propaganda. That needs to be mocked. It needs to be dis, dis, dismantled, you know. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. Uh, very kind of you. I'd like to meet you too. Let me know if we ever do meet that you sent this to me. Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the super chat. Oh, we just got another super chat. We better play the super chats. I want to be respectful to people who did that. Okay, uh, we watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And it was base to watch. <laughs> Satan's power is a flash, an instant, then nothing. Christ has triumphed over death. <whistles> Take my third world money, Matt. <laughs> Where are you from? All right, so this is Eric saying, the moment you call them baby killers, they're going to disengage because almost no one considers themselves a child murderer. Fair enough. So what are we going to do then, right? Like, what's, what are we going to do? Because here's the thing, like, no, like, think of somebody who beats their wife up, right? Who punches her in the face and gets drunk and abuses her. What, what, what would he not like to be called? Well, he wouldn't want to be called like a, a cowardly wife-beating son of a bitch. But that's what he, well, I shouldn't say son of a bitch. He's a coward, right? And he's a bastard. He don't want to be called those things. And it wouldn't help if I'm trying to help him to call him those things. So I do think we need to make a distinction between who's in front of us while at the same time calling a spade a spade. People who kill their children are by definition child killers. So the idea that we should never use the term, I think, is wrong. But I do agree with you that if we're going to engage with people, we want to do so charitably and we want to love them and we want to try and understand where they're coming from. And you're exactly right. We definitely don't want that sort of rhetoric if I'm having a coffee with somebody and I'm trying to help them. I'm not sure you think about that. <laughs> this fella says, you watch Daily Wire more than reading scripture. Wow, that almost felt personal. Well, stop it. Stop doing that. It would be awesome if you... No, I, yeah. No, I don't want to join the Daily Wire crew. They're doing good work, but I uh, I want to talk about Jesus, man. I just love him. I speak to a lot of women who hurt emotionally after abortion. Very little addressed that issue. Yeah, exactly. The, the pro-child sacrifices would say that any trauma someone feels after an abortion is just a result of their Christian upbringing or something like that. It's it's really uh, harsh. We we really need people who love on these women. And God bless them who do it. I was pro-abortion, or at least had no problem with it until my late 20s or so. Yeah, I presume you don't now. Uh, I'm a very pro-life, big Protestant, but still love a lot of your content as a brother in Christ. Hey, bless you, Peter. Thank you for being here. You know, I... I love my Protestant brothers and sisters. I mean that, and I mean that in a non-condescending way. I see in my Protestant brothers and sisters, the ones I know, right? Like, obviously, there are bad Protestants, just like there are bad Catholics, but the Protestants I know who take their faith seriously have a lot to teach me, and I love them for it, and I love their love of Jesus, and, you know, we disagree on things, and we shouldn't pretend we don't, but we should also work together to fight abortion, you know? Peter Kreef said, when a maniac is at the door, feuding brothers reconcile. That's true, not just of Protestants and Catholics. That's true of traditional Catholics and non-traditional Catholics. That's true, you know, like we got to join forces here. And, and we really have. I mean, the pro-life movement has been an example of what happens when Christians get together. All right. Thank you for your program. It has helped me to go from not really caring because my family was pro-choice to being more faithful Catholic. You're beautiful, Mary. Thank you kindly. Pints with Aquinas trademark. I don't understand why you said that, but it is trademark, by the way. The left keep the globalists in power, but under this admin, they have nothing to offer, so they will create strife like Roe. Yeah, the, the next election cycle will be all about abortion. In a way, I wonder if the Democrats were hoping that this would be overturned so that they could use it to maintain power. Matt, I've seen some women genu genuinely afraid. How do we address this? Afraid of what?
Have you heard of Apologia Church? They have great. They oops, they have the greatest anti-abortion ministry I think I've ever seen. That's awesome. I have heard of them. I disagree with much of what they say about Catholicism, but to the degree in which they oppose and fight abortion, I'm a huge fan of them. While many young Catholics, says Avi, are becoming more traditional, other young Catholics seem to be thinking it's acceptable to be a Catholic leftist pro-abortion. Yeah, I think that's the minority, though. Or oh, Caleb, you're a good man. I love when people are honest. There's nothing so beautiful as a vulnerability. He says, I was pro-abortion when I was deep in my own sexual sin. That's right. Sexual sin blinds us and causes us to hate God. That's one of the effects of sin that Thomas Aquinas talks about in the Summa Theologiae. One of the effects of sexual sin is a hatred of God. And we see that today. We see that. And we're going to see that as the Eucharist continues to be desecrated. Thank you for loving my channel. Okay, what is a woman can be found on dailywire.com. You have to subscribe to them in order to watch it. Um, it's a very well-produced documentary, and I'm thrilled that they made it that we had to pay to watch it. Why? Because water is free and whiskey costs money. Like, you want something good, you got to pay for it. Amazing documentaries like that one don't get produced without a ton of money behind it. So I would highly recommend subscribing to The Daily Wire and watching that movie. They're not paying me to say that, but they should. I attend the Latin Mass. So I obviously love it. Sweet. Uh, also a Protestant brother here. I love your ministry and the guests you have on. Trent especially is great on this topic. Yeah. It's great to have you here, by the way. Oh, Marcy, my sister. I love you. I'm so sorry for your pain. I'm so sorry about what happened to you. You say I was pro-abortion and was raped when I was 21. You're beautiful. I'm so sorry. I had an abortion and I knew the minute the baby was harmed that it was murder. You are so lovely, darling. Jesus has forgiven me and I've forgiven myself, but the grief is still real. Give Marcy a thumbs up. Oh, you're beautiful. Say a prayer for her. You're right, Jesus has forgiven you. When our sin goes up against God's mercy, it's like a drop of water flicked into a raging furnace. You know, it doesn't stand a chance. You have been forgiven. You have been made new. You're a beautiful daughter of God. And I'm so sorry for the pain that you experienced in your the sexual abuse you experienced, which is completely unjust. And I hope that that person is suffering the consequences and has been... Anyway, whatever, whatever about him. But um, and I'm so sorry you had an abortion. I pray that you would use your beautiful voice to help women. You know, God's made you powerful. He's made your wounds powerful. He wants to use your wounds to bless others. Thanks for sharing that. See, this is why I can never be on Daily Wire. They're too manly to cry on air. Um, I'm just joking. I'm way more manly than them. Um. <laughs> the cynicism a person has to adopt to assume that the Democrats wanted Roe versus Wade overturned for the sake of possibly boosting is kind of insane. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's cynical. Um, well, you tell me, Eric. Let's see if everything they do from here to the midterms revolves around abortion so-called rights. You don't think they're going to use this? You don't think this is going to be their primary soapbox? I don't know, man. Maybe I'm cynical. Maybe you're naive. Thanks for answering my previous question. Have you heard of the pro-abortion extremist group Jane's Revenge? Uh, their communique is very frightening. I have heard of them. God have mercy on their souls. <laughs> those are manly tears you should only cry at weddings funerals and when talking about god you know that reminds me oh whoops that reminds me <laughs> of ron swanson where he says there's no crying except for what is it, a funeral and at the grand canyon 
Uh, thanks, Patrick. You say, why do we say that this isn't a religious debate when it very much is? The left knows this, and this is why they bring up religion. How can we argue from the canopy when the attacks take it from its roots? It is a, re- I mean, it's a, it's a religious debate in one sense, but but maybe not in the way they understand it. Like when we talk about sin, the moral philosopher, right, would would talk about sin as something being unreasonable, right? Sin is unreasonable because it's out of conformity with what's true. So you can talk about sin in that regard and there's nothing wrong about doing that. But if you kill God's children, then I can't I don't see how you haven't become an enemy of God, right? Through loving the world and through submitting to the world. Right? If you if you if you offend me, I can forgive you. If you kill one of my children, yeah, we're not on good grounds here. And so, yeah, it's a religious debate, you know. I think, but but I don't think one needs to quote scripture to atheists in order to prove abortion is wrong, you know. We, we have to try to meet on common ground and argue from there, I think, you know. Maybe there's no common ground left. The Dems will use this, but inflation and gas prices will drive the votes red. Let's pray for Biden and Pelosi. They have let the dark overwhelm them. Yeah. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and all the enemies of the church. Amen. Yeah, so, okay, I agree, I agree with this. You know, there's got to be some, like, foundational moral ontology from which we argue. I think the reason this isn't always necessary is because we assume that certain things are intrinsically evil. So, like, I if I try to tell you racism is evil, I don't have to, like, immediately go to the fact that God exists and is the ontological basis for objective moral facts. Unless you begin to question that, you know. Or unless the conversation develops and we therefore begin to justify our truth claims, in which case we ought to do that, I think. (laughs) April, I love your smile. That's beautiful. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Hey, guys, what if we finish with a prayer to the Immaculate Heart of Mary? But before we do that, if you haven't subscribed, click subscribe. And if you like Pints with Aquinas, please become a supporter of ours over on Locals. We, we have daily morning podcasts over there. You get monthly audio books. I just paid Dr. Ed Fazer to record a seven-part video series on Thomas Aquinas' Five Ways. I'm putting together an ink-on-paper gorgeous newsletter that I'll be sending to your houses so that you can sit on the back porch, have a smoke, and we even have a cool Catholic trivia crossword puzzle articles from Father Gregory Pine. It's going to be amazing. You don't have to pay for that. Just by becoming a supporter, I'll even pay shipping. So you just get, I just start sending them out. There's a ton of stuff you give. I reckon I give more to people who support to me than most people do. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of doing that. Uh, and we really appreciate it because we, you know, we fly guests in and we, we're developing the studios and we're paying people's salaries to make Pines for the Quinas continue to grow. So please consider going over to mattfrad.locals.com and, uh, and sign up. Whatever amount would be so sweet. Really appreciate it. Um, All right, let's have a look at a prayer. Let's see here. To the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We're going to do this together. And by the way, if you don't have money to support me, then that's okay too. You don't have to obviously do what you want to do. It's just, it helps. And it doesn't go to my private whiskey collection. Although, maybe you could tag it and we'd start that. All right, let's see. By the way, that's what it looks like, mattfrad.locals.com. Click the link in below. All right, let's see here. Um, prayer to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Ah, oh, she's so beautiful. Let's do this. Let's do it, baby. 
All right, we're going to pray this together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Immaculate Heart of Mary, heavenly beauty and splendor of the Father, you are the most valued heavenly treasure. New Eve, immaculate in soul, spirit and body, created of the godly seed by the Spirit of God. You are the spiritual mother of mankind, pure virgin, full of grace then and now. Your whole being was raised heavenly in full victory to be elevated above all the hosts within the kingdom of God. O Heavenly Mother, Queen of heaven and earth, I recognize the glory of your highest title, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Loving Mother, despite dispenser of endless blessings, you who continuously intercede on our behalf, please present my needs before your loving son, Jesus. And I'm going to just speak on behalf of everybody watching. Here's my needs. I give you everyone protesting in the streets, everybody promoting the sacrifice of children, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi. I give them all to you and I pray for their good. These poor lost souls, Mary, Lead them to Jesus and lead me to Jesus. Help all of us watching to be saints. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to give you a moment to give your own petitions to Mary. I know that's weird to do on YouTube, but just do it. I'm going to give you like a couple of seconds here. Go for it. Talk to her in your own words. Go. O oh, Immaculate Heart of Mary, I know that you are now presenting my need before Jesus, for you have never turned away those in dire need. Mother dearest, I await your favorable answer, submitting myself to the divine will of the Lord, for all glories are his forever. Amen. How good is the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Glory forever, man. Oh, I love you guys. Bless you. Bless you. God, be merciful to us sinners. God, be merciful to us sinners. A heavenly king, comfort, a spirit of truth, present everywhere and filling all things, the treasury of blessing and the giver of life, come and dwell within us, cleanse us of all stain and save our souls, O gracious one.